Hello and welcome to 8 Days of Science. Coming up this week, SpaceX, Australia, and something else. I can't remember. Starting off the news this week is actually something that happened yesterday, when 7 Days of Science was meant to come out. SpaceX's interplanetary plans for the future, mostly focusing on Mars, are reliant on the ship they are building to get them there. This ship has undergone several design and name changes since its conception, but is now called Starship, and prototypes are now being tested as the SpaceX team look to have it flying in the next couple of years. This test saw the biggest test of the main vehicle, named Starship, to date, where it flew up to a high altitude, tested its hover capability, cut all its engines, and then attempted to straighten itself to land again on the launch pad. While the prototype, called SN8, did indeed manage to straighten itself for landing, it was not able to slow itself down enough before it hit the launch pad, causing a large explosion and destroying the prototype. SpaceX has since said that this was caused by low pressure in the fuel header tank during the landing burn, and they have reassured us that apart from this minor technical failure, the test was a massive success and lots of important data was secured. In other news is a paper that has described the eye of a radiodont from the Cambrian of Australia, belonging to Anomalocaris briggsi. Another eye had previously been discovered from this locality, belonging to a radiodont related to Anomalocaris canadensis, and both eyes seem to conform to the infrared lifestyles of these animals. While the predator of large organisms, the one related to A. canadensis, had acute stalked eyes suited for hunting in shallow waters with a lot of light, the other animal was a suspension feeder and had eyes that were able to find plankton in dim light much deeper down. The researchers explain how this further shows the remarkable diversity of radiodonts and how important the evolution of vision was in these ancient ecosystems. And now over to Ben, for the last time. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news, although technically it was published last week but we missed it, is a very intriguing paper that has examined the holotype specimen of Parasaurolophus walkeri. This specimen actually displays a number of injuries on the bones that have not until now been properly described. These injuries include a dental lesion in the jaw, fractures and calluses in the ribs, damage to the ilium, and various injuries to the vertebrae, such as a V-shaped gap between the dorsal spines of two of them. The presence of this many pathologies in one individual is particularly unusual, and suggests the animal suffered one or more traumatic events, one of which caused all the injuries to the front of the thorax, and the other injuries being secondary to this. So it's a very interesting study that lets us understand a bit more about this particular animal's life, which is always an amazing part of paleontology. And finally is a study that has looked at how Archaeopteryx molted its feathers. Using laser-stimulated fluorescence, researchers revealed feather sheaths in the fossils that were otherwise invisible under white light, and indicates that a sequential centre-out molting strategy was being used here, a method present in modern falcons that allows them to maintain maximum flight performance. This would certainly have been very useful for the first flying theropods, which had relatively poor flight abilities, and shows how already early birds could have refined their flight before their later adaptations. So some great paleontology news as always. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed, and feel free to subscribe if you did. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next Wednesday.